She is as pure a scorer as they come. Somebody to watch for for Oklahoma today. It's a great matchup to kick off the day, part of this Big 12 SEC Challenge. Have some other great games going on across the course of the day. Casting off from three. In and out. It's Q Morrison with the shot. And Oklahoma's a team that likes to play up-tempo, likes to play fast. Right now, Sherry Cole says their team identity offensively is based on their IQ, reading the defenses, and they're capable of scoring. Oklahoma in the crimson. Georgia in their home whites as the turnover there. Long jumper, good. Maya Caldwell, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Starter in all four games thus far on the year. Yes, sir. Three-pointer, good. Maddie Williams talked about her. You talked about her ability to score at all three levels. We see the furthest out. She really worked on her shooting, her handles. She can play in the post. She can score anywhere on the floor, and a good sign for her to get started early on the road. Been a week and a half, 11 days since Oklahoma's season opener. It's, it's been a hot minute, Tyler. It's, it, this team is ready to take the court. There's no doubt about it. Off as the shot clock was down, a third opportunity put back and in by Caldwell. Oklahoma's supposed to play in the crossover classic in South Dakota. Couldn't meet the player availability due to COVID contact tracing, so they missed games against Gonzaga, South Carolina, and South Dakota for Georgia. They're coming off a win, 66-45 at East Carolina. Quick back the other way and into the post for Stady. Gets her own miss, but out. Something just to watch early on on the boards. Does Georgia have an advantage? Uh, the thing is, is they have the, the depth this season. See the head coach for Oklahoma, Sherry Cole, 24 season, 501 career wins, three Final Fours, 10 Big 12 titles, 19 NCAA tournament appearances for the 2016 Women's Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. Sooners back the other way, scoops up the glass, but off. Georgia a chance. Run, transition three. Stady there. You already see Stady dominant on the glass, averaging 6.3 rebounds per game, along with her 13.7 points. See Joan Taylor, six seasons. Throwing the sidelines, 101 career wins. Actually was presented with the game ball for 100 career wins prior to the beginning of this one. You know, Tyler, this is not basketball related, but we have to give a shout out to their staff for dressing up. You know, I know athleisure is kind of in the signature for all coaches during this season, but we talked to her leading up to this game. I'm like, you're still out there with pumps and, and a dress on, and her whole staff is all dressed up. There's Robert, Karen, and Chelsea Newton, and, and she said, we're, we're asking our players to resume normalcy. So what's the difference if I, I, I've got to dress up and do, his, do my part as well? Well, on the flip side, I do have to give a shout out to Coach Cole and her Jays and what she's rocking. They not hating on the Jays. They keep a mean <laughs> game. But yeah, it was the sense of normalcy that Coach Taylor had talked about and trying to put that on a season that we all know will be and has been so far from normal. How they'd like to do it. We're out here, fully suited and booted. Hey. Georgia off to a fast start. They've gotten a couple second chance opportunities. Down on there and quick back as a whistle and a foul. Today a top will go to the line. It's something that Oklahoma did really well against Houston in their first time is getting to the free throw line. And 
Oklahoma's issue in that game was just defensively, and that's something Sherry Cole had a concern with coming into this game, was defending the depth of Georgia, the height and the speed and quickness, and, and, and they just don't have the bodies, so it's going to be by committee, a lot of communication and uh, making sure everybody's in the, in the right place, right help side, because Georgia and Joni Taylor, she can go five in and five out. If this thing stays up tempo, that obviously favors the Lady Bulldogs. Well, we've seen both teams getting quickly up and down the court. Oklahoma scored 85 points in that season opener against Houston. Problem was they allowed 97. Coach Cole talked to us and doesn't think that offense will be a problem, but after that Houston game, they weren't able to practice until Tuesday. Four days of practice, but the issues, she said, effort, playing a little harder and take some pride in defending. The shooting foul, Maya Caldwell will go to the line. Break down this one for us, your keys for the game. For Oklahoma, defensively, we've kind of been harping on that. If you can hold Georgia below 70, I think that's a good number. And then for limiting Georgia's second chance points, already here in this first quarter, we saw Jenna Stady getting on the glass. And with that size, Georgia has to do a really good job of blocking out. And, and for Georgia, forcing 20 turnovers. One, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna disrupt the, the offense for Oklahoma, but you're also going to get out in transition and more importantly, getting points in the paint. In the last three games, that they've been averaging over 40 points in the paint, so I think they have an advantage there. And right to Jenna Stady. Yeah, this one has really played out thus far right to your keys. What we have seen, second chance opportunities, the advantage that Georgia has, especially with Stady. Second chance wise, seeing some of that here. Gabby Connolly runs this offense, but again, it's being aggressive, pursuing the basketball. Multiple opportunities there. Maya Caldwell gets her own rebound again, and this is multiple possessions. And if you're short on your roster, like Oklahoma is, you've got to just keep it one and done. We've already seen Coach Cole go to the bench a couple times. Has the whole roster here, a couple of opt outs. Dunbar, Lampkin, and Mercer prior to the season. So knew what they would have. Yeah, Sherry Cole talking about this season, Tyler, is going to be the year of pivoting. Obviously didn't get to start their season like they wanted in the non-conference as Maddie Williams knocks down the, the two. But sometimes, you know, with adversity, you like how your team responds, and she has so far with this team. And Jenna State, I mean, this Georgia team, when she's playing like this, and now that they have more pieces in the post to give her a break, but she was so dominant to end last, last year, and it got short, obviously, with, with COVID and the pandemic, and then going into this year, you wonder, was she, was she gonna be able to keep that steam going? And she certainly has. Opportunity for the and one is good. So good at the line. She's a perfect five for five on this season. Double digit points, 11 of the last 12 games. Had a great effort, 21 points, 12 rebounds, seven blocks in that win at Georgia Tech in overtime. One of the most improved in the SEC last year and just continuing to build on that is Stady. And that seems to be one of the questions early on. Can Oklahoma find an answer for number 14 on the other end? Can Georgia find some defense on number 25? The Sooners try the post there, Stady with the block. Had seven of them against Georgia Tech. It's off for three. Oklahoma will get the rebound. Gabby Gregory. So tough. Sophomore, I mean, this is that was a, a player who never backed down as a freshman. She always wanted to play for Oklahoma. It's Jenna Stady again disrupting the paint protector for the Lady Bulldogs. Now they can get out in transition. Pretty basketball. There you go, that's how you draw it up. Finished off by Gabby Conley on the break. 16-11, the advantage for Georgia. Another chance to run. Look at Stady out in front. Ooh, rewarded. As a big, you love that, right? You run the floor, your guard you gotta, finds you. You gotta throw it to him. Good lead from Williams. You see from Georgia wanting to go quick. 
right back on the other end. Connolly good from three. Tyler, I think for Oklahoma, you got to get Taylor Robertson involved. Number 30 in red. She's one of the best shooters in the country. Get her, get her moving without the basketball. She needs to get going offensively. There's a rebound opportunity, but an offensive foul. It'll go the other way, but Georgia off to a great start here on the season and off to a great start in this, their home opener. Stady with the defense running the floor are the Lady Bulldogs, making them from three as well. They lead 21-13 halfway through the first. Tomorrow, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions. Alyssa Lang, Spencer Hall, Richard Johnson, Brandon Boykin, breaking down the weekend on the gridiron. Talk about the hottest topics for the coming week right here on SEC Network and the ESPN app. Shout out to Alyssa Lang. Miss you, partner. I'm going to see you in studio soon. And for Oklahoma, down a little bit here in the first quarter, but Maddie Williams has been the bright spot for Sherry Cole. And Something that we've talked about with, with several coaches I've, I've begun college basketball season is, is during the time where players had to quarantine and, and be isolated, those who really love the game really went to work. And this is a player, Maddie Williams, who, yes, she's averaging 25 so far, but she's only had one game, but she put in the work in the off season to become a better player overall. And that's with her ball handling, with shooting, shooting from the outside. I think Sherry Cole kind of made a good point is when everything got taken away, it kind of highlighted those who love the game found a way, and Maddie Williams certainly did that this offseason. Preseason all Big 12 honorable mention, and I love how she put it. She said for most of these players, might be the first time in their lives going back to maybe when they were four, five, six years old, first time they picked up a basketball, where they weren't being forced yeah. to compete in their sport. And not necessarily forced, but having that structure of, hey, you got this game, you got this practice, this camp, where it was, if you love the game, you're gonna pick up the ball, you're gonna go outside, you're gonna find a hoop, find a way to improve on your game. And that's really gonna show on the floor this year. No, no mom and dad taking you to practice or camps. And, you know, some players didn't have a hoop. Some players didn't necessarily have access to a basketball. All things that we probably took for granted that were taken from a lot of these players. And then it just was up to individuals to put into that, that effort and that work. We had to give a Maddie Williams shout out because I got a lot of respect going to town during the summer when and there was a lot of adversity for all Americans, really globally. Coach Cole put it best. She said they heard their own voice, the players following their own passion and desire. Great start for Georgia. Finally makes the free throw. Very good free throw shooting team, 82% from the strike. Leaves the SEC 16th in the NCAA. Is quick action. Seen some great defense from Georgia. A lot of shot contests, block shots. This is a Georgia program that's fundamentals. The foundation of this team and the program are based on their defensive effort. I mean, I always talk to people about when I knew I was going to face Georgia when I was playing in college. You knew you were going to get hit. You knew you were going to get slapped. <laughs> I mean, this is Georgia. They're, they're so tough, and you can see right on the catch. And that's understanding scouting. Gabby Gregory is a player who can score anywhere, but you got to stay right on her hip. Really good job by Georgia defensively. It's number four, Michaela Coombs, the redshirt junior, started her career at UConn. This her first season of eligibility. It's quick back out. Boy, Georgia wants to run. Layup missed. You know, that's where they've really been able to make up for you know, not shooting the three ball really well. And, and they struggle in the first three games, but their transition has been much better this year. And here's Michaela Coons. If you're watching at home, she's going to be special. She's lightning fast. The UConn transfer. Still getting her feet wet a little bit. Had to sit out. 56 games played across two seasons at UConn. For the product of Buford, Georgia. 2017 Gatorade Georgia Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American. Very nice piece to incorporate into the fold for Coach Taylor and the rest of the staff. Little head fake there, steps through off the dribble, Conley. 14-2 run now 
for Georgia, contesting this shot. Attempt from Williams and back out. It turned over. Nice run out and Williams finishes. Opportunity for a three point play. And talking to Joni Taylor, Georgia has struggled with turning the ball over. And Oklahoma, listen, they're savvy offensively, and they're going to look to push here with Tot the freshman. And Maddie Williams, we're going to be calling her name a lot today, as she's the most versatile piece for this Oklahoma Sooners offense. She's really gone to work so far in this first quarter. Williams, nine points, four for eight. So out of the 14 field goal attempts, over half of those from number 25 as she converts the three-point play. That's the lead down to nine. That off from deep. You talk about the three-point shooting woes, just 20% from behind the arc by the Lady Bulldogs. Put Michaela Coon is one of their better defenders on Taylor Robertson. Again, 30 and led. Somebody who led the nation a year ago in threes per game. She came into the season averaging 19 a game last year. Didn't feel like she played like herself against Houston. So I'm just kind of waiting for her to get going offensively. She's a big piece of their offense. Yeah, preseason all big 12. Drysdale watch list. Started all 30 games last year, 131 three-pointers. That's it. Set the Big 12 single season record. Just a few. National leader in made threes, but you look at this game thus far, she doesn't have a single field goal attempt. At number 30, you see on the right-hand side in the crimson and cream for Oklahoma. But something we expected as well for Georgia to throw a lot of bodies at her. Well, that's the advantage of having so much depth, especially at the guard position. Quick, speedy, athletic guards. Just staying real tight to, to Taylor Robertson because she doesn't need much space. I mean, she's as pure shooter as I've ever seen. But her hitting some three-pointers really opens the lane for, for dribble penetration and for Maddie Williams and even Mandy Simpson, the six-foot senior down in the post. Georgia eight and nine from the line, now nine of 10. Is that good from Jordan Isaacs, the sophomore from Alpharetta, Georgia? Had a first career start earlier this season against Mercer, scoring eight points. Something to keep an eye on as well. Oklahoma two fouls apiece for Maddie Williams and Beitenheimer. For a team already lacking in options. An early foul trouble is a whistle. The ball will stay on this end. I think you're Oklahoma, you've got to take more looks with the post pair, bringing Jenna Stady away from the rim. That's where she's most comfortable. And Liz Scott, just a simple catch and shoot, but she draws Jenna Stady, the shot blocker, rim protector, away from the rim. And at six foot two, the sophomore, she's really improved this year. Sherry Cole, very excited about her progress off her freshman year. Sarah Ashley Barker shooting the free throws. Freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. Don't see that too often. Georgia missing free throws, both of them. Nine point lead. And it left in this opening quarter here in Athens. Opportunity off the Oklahoma miss on the run out. And that Coombs in transition. Georgia just crushing Oklahoma with their transition offense. That was the point of emphasis for Joni Taylor this season. Playing with a little bit more structure. Nine fast break points for Georgia. Five turnovers for Oklahoma. Really smart and heady play by Liz Scott. We just talked about her bringing Jenna Stady away from the rim. 
and on that play, bringing her out again on the perimeter, making her defend on the ball. And there she draws the foul. So I like what Liz Scott has done, the, the sophomore coming in and giving them a, a little bit of juice that Oklahoma needed. From Tomball, Texas. Six foot two. Isaac sat down for Georgia Nicholson in. Oklahoma gets it back to single digits. About five seconds between shot and game clock. Conley with the dribble. Keeps it the whole possession, loses possession, and Oklahoma a chance to close it out. A little lackadaisical on the throw in, but a foul call. Nearly a turnover. Yeah, that could have been a little bit dangerous. It's, it's almost like when you're watching football and the, and the ball is thrown across midfield and you got the defender. Coming just up against to see. the receiver, and it's just, I'm glad both players are okay there. Vietok, freshman from McKinney, Texas. Talking to Coach Cole about the Vietok, I said, well, she plays with a sense of speed, and she goes, at five foot three, she better. Using that speed. Yes. 10 seconds left. In the first quarter. Beautiful feed to Stady. Misses it off the front iron and then a foul picked up. See, look at how things really, about two minutes left in the first quarter. Georgia in full control of the opening frame, but things have slowed down here. A couple fouls and an opportunity for Oklahoma here at the line. You'd think that they walk away, make a couple free throws, like where they're at. Well, they're not getting as many stops defensively as they were to start this first quarter, but more importantly, they're not making shots, and especially in transition. We're talking about layups. Jenna Stady, those are shots that she normally makes, and she has to make. And soon with attempt number two misses. Stady with the rebound, and that'll close out. Quarter number one, Georgia with some good defense. They forced five turnovers, six points off that. They get out in transition and run. Nine points on the break, 12 points in the paint. Georgia Lady Bulldogs, perfect on the season. Their home opener, they lead by seven after one. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia, Big 12 SEC Challenge. Georgia 3-0 on the year, Oklahoma 0-1. Lady Bulldogs leading by seven. Let's talk some Oklahoma Sooners coaching staff. And Steffi, arguably, if not the most talented and competitive staff you're going to find across the whole landscape of college basketball. Yeah, Courtney Paris, one of the best to, to ever play. Man, what a, what a career she had. And she's just been brought on for the this season, and Jackie Styles, 3,300 career points. The only person to break that was, was Kelsey Plum, and talking to Sherry Cole and, and her staff, I'm like, I don't know who wants to take you guys three on three, because all you gotta do is lob it up, and, and Jackie Styles can score anywhere, but Courtney Paris in her first season, obviously coaching the post players, and Sherry Cole talking about how difficult, what a first year to come in and learn how to coach and finding your voice, hidden underneath a mask. But regardless, two fantastic players and, and even Colton Cole, who's Sherry Cole's son now on her staff, very talented. It's kind of a trend that we're seeing now in women's college basketball is, is former players coming back, but recent former players, players that had a tremendous amount of time in the league. Um, Courtney Paris being one of those. Carol Lawson taking the Duke job. That was a really big hire, and she was coaching in the NBA before that. Um, even for Mike Neighbors over at Arkansas, Kelsey Flum, she's one of his GAs. And so you take, if you're one of the guards for Arkansas, you're, who, who better to answer questions than Kelsey Plum? And you know, the, the OGs, Don Staley and, and Tina Thompson, also doing a terrific job. But I think it's kind of 
this generation of players, they might not know what you did in the 90s. So if you were a player who recently wrapped up in the WNBA or have overseas and, and you're a well-known name, they know you. And that helps, especially with recruiting. And Coach Cole had put it great to us. It said the challenge, talking about Courtney Paris is in not only finding her voice in this season, but for great players when they become coaches, then you don't realize how much you have to tell another player because it's just so instinctive for those great players. That's why they're great players. So translating that, trying to do so, I've spent a lot of time around Coach Tina Thompson, who is a phenomenal oh, resource. You could just sit there and soak up game. But it's great to see those names and then see the impact that they continue to have on the game is Q Morrison quickly out. Georgia, that the start they want to see for the second quarter, getting Morrison involved. Haven't said her name too much thus far. I think uh, Sherry Cole wanted to talk with the referee more so than <laughs> their timeout to, to consult with him, but Q Morrison and she's become more efficient offensively this season. Joni Taylor said that we've always known Q would get things done on the defensive side of the floor, but you get at that top of the key and you put the defense in such a bind because you've got to commit from help side and you've got to have rotation. And that was a concern for Oklahoma. Can you guard by committee? And Q Morrison is, is such a quick, speedy guard. She gets to the rim pretty easily and untouched. Senior from Riverdale, Georgia. Career high 20 points against Georgia Tech had a surgery to repair her torn labrum in her right shoulder back on February 25th. The 2020 SEC All-Defensive Team for Q. So nice to see that offensive game complement the defensive game. So we talked about that thousandth win who it came against ECU, Q Morrison with 14 points. But just Georgia and Tennessee, the two SEC programs to have 1K victories. Yeah, I mean, talking to Joni Taylor about all the groundwork that Andy Landers did for this Georgia program and kind of had an interesting conversation with her because Coach Landers, Andy Landers, recruited Joni Taylor she was the Gatorade player of the year in Mississippi. She was no scrub. She ended up going to Alabama, play there in 97. And when she got to Georgia, she said that the first thing Andy Landers did was he asked her questions. What do you know that I don't know? She said, that was when I knew this was a special program. And she kind of highlighted how when she was playing against him, he was so intense, he was so fiery. And I said, listen, I've gotten to know him now being in sports broadcasting. I thought he was crazy, <laughs> but he's really a teddy bear. And there's no time when I'm with him that a former player or a coach doesn't call him and wants advice, wants to talk. And so when Joni Taylor took this position, it was passing of the baton, but very, maybe different personalities with the same principles, the same foundation. And so, what a joy to see them win a thousand program wins and Joni Taylor obviously a part of that and Andy Landers, the two of them, and all the players and, and coaches along the way. It's a great piece we may get to show you later that they actually just ran in the arena narrated by both Coach Landers and Coach Taylor talking about all those different pieces that have gone into not just the players, coaches, but everybody that's helped be part of those 1,000 program wins. I think they're gonna get a couple more this year. Oklahoma has turned up the defense. Yep, going back to that man-to-man -man defense. Playing a little bit more aggressive. I see Liz Scott banging around with the post players. Trying to find some space as the shot clock down, and they do with two left. That laid off the glass. Georgia does such a good job in their offense of going and running high-low opportunities. Here's Taylor Robertson. First look will get, as I said, she does not need much space to get that three off. Finally casting off at her second field goal attempt, but first from behind the arc. Led the NCAA last year. 131. She sent through the net from behind three. So a huge key for Oklahoma offensively. Did she get going? I think it's so important if, if you're a shooter and you're struggling to get open looks. There's two ways 
to kind of counteract that. One is in transition and also two is set screens. I knew if I wanted to get an open three, I'm setting at least three screens. You'll lose your defender to see if they get her a little bit more screening action. Three are up after that make. Well, that just as you said it, they actually go into her side wide open with jumper. Rims around and goes in for Liz Scott. So Oklahoma hanging around. And a reminder, Jenna Stady with two fouls sitting on the bench. So they've got Nicholson out there right now to replace her. And Mallory Bates. Look at the activity, too, and the communication you see on the Oklahoma side. Defensively, got to minimize the second chance opportunities. There was one there, but missed in the rebound from Mandy Simpson. Defense, another block. Mallory Bates with that one. Off from three and that in. Nevea top. So this now down to a one possession lead for Georgia. She's been so aggressive in this first half. I mean, as a, as a, as a, in high school, she scored over 2,000 points. So she's a capable scorer playing in that point guard position. She'll look for her shot. But yeah, I mean, you gotta love the way that Oklahoma plays. I mean, they're so gritty and tough. Shorthanded on the season, no doubt, but. And you can tell just watching the Oklahoma bench. <laughs> Seems like Coach Cole is managing a lot like maybe hockey with the line changes. Yes, quick spurts, getting players in and out. Managing that personnel, but her team has definitely responded. I go back to that about two minute, one minute mark left at the end of the first quarter. It looked like Georgia could have really put their foot on the gas, but some missed layups, missed opportunities. A couple free throws converted for Oklahoma. But they definitely ratcheted up the intensity defensively, and you also had mentioned it's Stady sitting on the bench. Just making it difficult for them in the half court. They want to slow Georgia down in transition, get back, make it into a half court. One and done, rebound the ball, get it out, and score. It's been an 8-0 run over the last minute and a half for Oklahoma. Leading the post. Help defense coming from Robertson. She will earn the foul. When you've got great post players and, and post players who know how to pass, look at Gabby Connolly. She's running the offense. Turns Mallory Bates in terrific position to run that high low. So Isaacs after the work and the seal. Get an opportunity to shoot a couple. 50% free throw shooter coming into this one, but just four attempts. Makes the first, misses the second. There's the speedster probing. Off the defense, stays on this side. Corner three and that one. Good from Skylar Van, the freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma. That's what you got to do. You've got the size advantage if you're Georgia. You pack that ball into the paint. And Nicholson picking up right where she left off last game, scoring in double figures. Down after that contact, Connolly getting helped out. One of the big statistical advantages right now, Oklahoma, four of six from behind the line. Coach Taylor for Georgia had talked about knowing it. Oklahoma coming in, averaging eight three-point makes per game, having to defend the line, but Georgia just one for five. Big reason why we see this just a three-point game. And you expect Georgia within that half-court defense to understand everybody pretty much for, for Oklahoma can shoot the three with the exception of a few post players of, of closing out and making and being more sharp defensively because Oklahoma can shoot the three and that's, that's how they're staying in the game right now. They're being a little bit more aggressive and knocking down shots in the half court. Connolly was off with her drive. Top quick back. 
to the feet. I believe that one was tipped. Another shot deflection. Oof. Tough screen. By the way, you want to spend your Sunday <laughs> afternoon working through screens like that, right? Someone's got to call screen for her. Protect your guard. That ball block. Good defense by Heavenly Greer, the freshman at six foot three. So she has some size to go against Nicholson. Second chance opportunity off. This from Nicholson. I'd like to get a count on Georgia missed layups. They've had a couple really close ones, yeah. at least four or five. The problem for them last year and so far in this game. I mean, we're talking maybe five or six missed miss layups. We're in a different conversation. Out in transition, that three continues to haunt Georgia as well. That one off from Connolly. Foul called Isaacs will shoot a couple at the strike. Second on Greer. Joni Taylor very high on Jordan Isaacs, the six foot sophomore. Talked about her giving them tremendous leadership and energy. She cheers on her team, teammates there, but just a sophomore made her way into the starting lineup as we've talked about. Georgia has tons of depth, so it says something about the sophomore, but kind of the glue that does a lot of things that maybe don't get noticed, but that you need out there on the floor. She's also going to make her free throws. And Steffi asking, we shall receive. How about that Maybe eight, eight. Wow. layups for Georgia? When you look at. So you're leaving 16 points out there, if I did my math right. Yep, now a four-point game. I don't think I've ever seen a three-point layup, so yeah, I think you did. That one quick out. Oklahoma back on the other side. to work it into the post, but around for the steal. Good hustle over the bench, wow. Man, Connolly has taken some contact today. That one, the effort trying to save that ball. The hustle. This was not your average play to save a ball. Let's take a look at Gabby Connolly, the senior. Gets a tip, a deflection, the extra effort here, busting over the table. Oh. She was good, it was the left knee that caught it. More than she probably bargained <laughs> for when she jumped over to save the ball. But she brings that toughness and competitive nature. Thursday, the latest episode of True South, John T. Edge travels around Brownsville, Tennessee. Two visionary restaurants, Helen's Barbecue and City Fish Market. Also explore two amazing art projects. Two, True South, presented by Yellowwood. Thursday, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, the SEC Network and ESPN app. So, Gabby Connolly, we've seen over the last handful of minutes, take a very hard screen and then over into press row there, courtside. Ooh, how about that play right there? The one dribble. Maddie Williams continuing to showcase, like you had talked about, top of the show, all three levels of her offensive game. Well, that's some elite skill when you, when you look back at that play with the shot fake, the up and under finish, the athleticism. She's a five-star recruit coming out and has really evolved her game into being a total, complete, package for Sherry Cole. From Fort Worth, Texas, played at Trinity Valley School, scored in double figures, 27 to 30 games. Look at this move. Up under, two, two defenders. defenders. Beautiful. 720 plus point games, led the team and made field goals last year, 192, second in points, 484. Played in all 30 games, 26 starts, mentioned preseason, all Big 12 honorable mention, but he may be part of that Big 12 first team. This one knotted up at 37. Feels like the pace has really slowed down on yep. one end offensively for Georgia. 
I mean, Oklahoma's brought their offensive game up. Oklahoma's definitely settled into their offense, not turning the ball over as much as they did in the first quarter. Now just seven on the game. Remember, Georgia had all those runouts and easy twos. Hello. Wow. A handle there just could not finish. That was Liz Scott putting the defender on the ground. Connolly, good from three. Joni Taylor knowing how big that three is for the confidence of the guards along the perimeter for Georgia. Well, Georgia just two of seven from behind the line, but Connolly with both of them, she's two for five. As Williams will work on the dribble. That three off. Seen plenty of hustle though. From the Sooner side. I really love the play so far of 34 and red right there, Liz Scott. And you have to think, going against Courtney Paris, arguably one of the best post players to ever play, has been beneficial for Miss Scott. I think that Sherry Cole made that reference of, uh, my post players are scoring against Courtney Paris, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, how about the work <laughs> you can get in practice yeah. having an assistant coach of that caliber? Three minutes left on the clock. Williams will feed the post. Opportunity to shoot two for Gabby Gregory. Morrison with three fouls will sit down. She exchanges a high five with Stady, who continues to sit as well. Those nine points. So two of the key defensive components for Georgia on the bench. But what is the bench this year now? <laughs> the bench area. Second chance opportunity. Connolly, another chance from three, good again. Terrific half court execution by Gabby Connolly using the screen and a good call by Joni Taylor. Trip called there. Trying to work around the screen was Gregory. Dribble handoffs so effective, and she's going to set the screen fake, come back. And when you go under the screen, especially against Gabby Connolly, who's just hit a three pointer, she's going to pull it every time. So, a little bit of an error by Gabby Gregory defensively. Got to stay tight to the shooters. We talked about floor spacing, trying to extend the court. The woes for Georgia, I had mentioned 20% as a team. Connolly coming into this one was just two for 13 from behind the arc of three for six. Thus far is a jump ball called. Arrow goes to Georgia. Look at this. At the bench area. And that's not even showing you where Stady and Morrison are. They're down on the baseline you see coming into the right portion of the frame. What a time. <laughs> A big shout out to everybody, all the personnel making it possible. There are fans in the stands, obviously social distancing protocols as well. We are in the arena, which is so nice to be in the arena calling a game. We're wearing our masks, but plenty of COVID protocols in place and trying to make it as safe as possible for players, fans, everybody, so we can all share in the experience of at least getting to watch some basketball. There's no doubt talking to players and coaches about this season is just the immense sense of gratitude that you're able to go out, tip the ball up, and get some games underway during a crazy time. Williams trying to work that handle at least a little bit. Set up with a beautiful entry pass that found Simpson. 
always been impressed by Oklahoma's high IQ in the half court offense. They read defenses extremely well. That's why you'll see them. They're not the strong or excuse me, tallest team. But they score a ton of points in the paint because they know when to cut to the basket when they're where there's open shots. Maddie Williams, she's a guaranteed bucket in this game. Sometimes I would just say, give her the ball. <laughs> Let, her Let her go. She's so fun to watch. You can really see that work that she has put in her game this year. It's showing on the floor, trying to feed the post. Another turnover. You know, that's Jordan Isaacs has got to do a better job catching it in that on that high post, looking for the high low. You want to look and you, you want to make that pass, but she's two times now. She hasn't even really looked where her other post player is before she's making the pass. Working into the post, the Georgia bench was up, thought they had a hook on Gregory, but Gregory puts it in. That one converted to Morrison. Excuse me, 22, Mallory Bates, the redshirt junior. Go back and look at that play that the Georgia fans and bench thought. Gabby, Gabby Connolly's taking a, a beating today. I don't know, Tyler, what'd you think? Eh, I thought it was a good no call. She actually physically wrapped her arm around Gabby Connolly, I had understand. It was just the elbow it looked like that so had finished it off, but more to your point, yes, we have seen Connolly on the screen, on the bench, down there in the post as well, fighting. And, and you don't want to be easily screened, right, as a guard, and, and you know your all-in balls are coming, so a post player, whoever set in that screen, they have got to call louder to help Gabby Connolly out so she can avoid being screened. For the sake of her body at this point, we've seen her taking tons of shots. She's gonna get a break right now. Well earned. The physical first half, but productive as well. For the senior guard. Three-point lead for Georgia. Trying to hold for the last shot of the opening half. Corner three. That one good. Maya Caldwell. Oklahoma will get one more look at it. The heave no good. But Georgia, they've got it going from behind the line, 40%. Ten, they lead by 6, 48-42, part of this Big 12 SEC Challenge. Well, every Saturday morning, we get you set for all the college football games with SEC Nation, hosted by Laura Rutledge, Roman Harper, Tim Tebow, and Jordan Rogers. We'll have live reports from stadiums, features, and all the game breakdowns. Be the fans part of the show, SEC Nation, presented by Johnsonville. Back with a football wrap-up here in a moment. New Year's Day, the college football playoff lives on ESPN. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia, Stegman Coliseum, Big 12 SEC Challenge. The Georgia Bulldogs leading 48 to 42. Big reason, senior guard, Gabby Connolly, 15 points, including three to six from behind the arc. Yeah, she took some bumps and bruises out there today here at Stegman Coliseum, but without her effort and those 15 points, I don't know if Georgia would be in the lead, and it always makes for a better offensive flow when you got Gabby Connolly shooting threes, making threes. Look at these hustle plays from the senior, diving out of bounds, but more importantly, hitting those threes when Georgia was kind of stagnant offensively, but she can kind of do it all for Joni Taylor and these Lady Bulldogs. But a hot start for her in this first half. On the other side, it's Maddie Williams with the team high 14 points. As we go back and look at the keys to the game that you had mentioned prior, how you see in that thus far? Well, defensively, they're, 
maybe on pace to score more than 70, but I think Oklahoma's done a pretty good job defensively. And limiting Georgia's second chance points, 12 so far. But Tyler, Georgia has 13 offensive points, excuse me, 13 offensive rebounds. So they did leave some on the table. And for Georgia, they've only forced nine turnovers. I think with their, their depth and their aggressive defensive style, they can force more here in this second half and get out and transition and score. And then points in the paint. And that goes back to missing layups. They've had chances. They've had offensive rebounds. 20 points. Think they need to get to 30 to 40. They can. They've just left some on the table. we got another 20 minutes to go. Tyler, getting Steffi Sorensen a great day of basketball between these two conferences. The Big 12 SEC Challenge happening. Have a couple really good matchups later this afternoon, evening as well. But you look at a couple other stats. 12 of 19 from the free throw line for a very good free throw shooting team is Georgia. And then those missed layups. We talked about eight missed layups, possibly a couple more yeah. after we had mentioned that. So points that have been left for Georgia, the story, but for Oklahoma, their grittiness. Just 10 players on the roster. Yep. We've seen in and out of the ball game their personnel, but they're physical. They really cranked it up in that second quarter. You know, we've talked a lot about depth and the ability to rotate five in, five out for, for Joni Taylor and, and, and Georgia. But Tyler, Oklahoma, who's very shorthanded, they have 19 bench points. And so coming into this game, Georgia's done a great job of outscoring their opponent's bench. But so far, Oklahoma, 19 in this game. Also, keep an eye for Georgia. Number 14, Stady played just nine minutes, had nine points across those nine minutes, but two personal fouls. Was big defensively prowling the middle with a couple of blocked shots. Quick bucket right in front of her, her team. At the six point advantage. Caldwell Connolly, Stady, Isaacson, Morrison on the court. For Georgia, Simpson, Gregory, Williams, Robertson, Weitenheimer for Oklahoma. Jump shot off the screen, that one good from Gregory. Really good start for her to start this third quarter. And she's a tough-nosed kid, sophomore, but as a freshman, big game against Baylor, had 30. She does not back down from anywhere. She can score mid-range, in the paint, three. Steffi, how hard is it for a player like Stady that's had to sit for as long as she did to try to re-weave yourself back into the fabric of the game? I think she just has to, you know, start with a defensive play, something in her control, get a tip, get a deflection, block a shot, something like that. Get her some energy, which will feed into her offense. Foul called there. Yeah, we, we talked about how she can get back into this game after sitting out. And you wonder if she's playing a little bit hesitant now with those fouls and not wanting to pick up, pick up another one. She gets beat off the dribble. She's got to do a better job of positioning to get in a clean block as opposed to trying to block from behind, which is you're going to get a foul called on you every time. Yeah, that opening 10 minutes, Stady was really all over the place. The two yep. blocks, the rebounds, the second chance opportunities, those nine points. So just keep an eye on biggest player on the floor, height-wise. Uh, from three is the shot from Morrison. Also for number 30 in the crimson and cream, Taylor Robertson. Only one three-point field goal attempted for a player that averages just under nine per game for her career. Oklahoma doing such a good job but just beating Georgia to the basketball, pursuing offensive rebounds and Jenna Stady making her presence felt by blocking that shot, at least altering the shot. Trying to feed that post. We've seen some turnovers for Georgia trying to make that entry pass to their different post players today. It, and it's such a big part of their half-court offense is that dribble entry into the high post to look for the high-low. And again, it's kind of been Jordan Isaacs that she hasn't been patient once she's got that. That pass 
to Jenna Stady is there. She's just rushing it. She's forcing it. Teams even with nine turnovers apiece. See the bodies continuing to be thrown at Robertson. Turnover number 10 for Oklahoma off the traveling violation. So let's see what Georgia comes with. Their offensive set here. Morrison will pull up and that good. Then a little bit of defense, that's what she was known for. Translates that to offense, so a great sequence for the senior Q Morrison. Coach pleased with that. Defense is always gonna get you out on the floor for Joni Taylor and Q Morrison, known for her defense. Quick hands, athletic. That's just playing with her hands up. Her hands aren't by her side. She's got them active, she's up, she's ready, but more importantly, she converts it into two points. Puts her team up seven points. So good energy for the Lady Bulldogs coming out of the locker rooms. Nice move around Morrison to finish from Simpson. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say she might have learned that move from Coach Paris. It's oh, a good person to learn from too. Step through. Off but a whistle. Oklahoma pretty much going really small, playing five guards essentially. And so offensively, Mandy Simpson, the six foot senior, she understands a mismatch, has Q Morrison on her, immediately posts up, great hesitation, and she's got good footwork around the rim, but she has guard-like skills. And so Sherry Cole kind of going small ball right now, using some of that speed and, and their ability to get to the rim and also having some mismatches. But can Georgia take advantage of the fact that Oklahoma kind of going with five guards right now. Yeah, Simpson, you'd mentioned six foot one, the senior. So being tasked to play that biggest role on the floor in terms of height is Williams off the dribble. That blocked out for three. That one good. Abby Gregory. First three that she's made. Three of seven from the field, seven points. As her team continues to hang around. But no answer for that as the entry pass good to Stady. Back on the board. Gets the roll. Oklahoma six of nine from behind the arc. Got to give a shout out Tyler to Mandy Simpson on that previous possession for Oklahoma offensively. She set about four screens, which ultimately got taught the freshman open, but she set in screen, ball screen. She's away from the ball. She's setting another screen. But Jenna Stady blocks the ball, but ultimately leads out to a Oklahoma three. You talked about that earlier in the game, the activity for these scorers and these great offensive players, but how they also impact the game, the movement, screen setting. You can really tell for Georgia trying to feed that ball into the post. A violation called there. Stady did not clear the lane in time. We have a good one here. Big 12 SEC Challenge. Georgia up by three.
7 Eastern, 6 Central, Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regions with Alyssa Lang, Spencer Hall, Richard Johnson, Brandon Boykin, breaking down the weekend on the gridiron right here on SEC Network, ESPN app. This game, part of the Big 12 SEC Challenge. So great when these two storied conferences get together. We've seen some good matchups already. Kentucky over K-State, Ole Miss over Kansas, Alabama over Oklahoma State. Our matchup going on right now, but a couple other really good ones going on and slated for later on today. Love the Indiana-Kentucky matchup. Ryan Howard looking to bounce back after kind of a rocky start to her season. She's in the National Player of the Year candidate. South Carolina also looking to rebound after that loss to NC State at home. Got a good one here in Stegman Coliseum here in Athens. Maddie Williams kind of been quiet. 14 points, I should say quiet in this quarter. One as well, my neck of the woods, Texas A&M, Texas. How about that? You talk storylines, Big 12 oh. SEC. Big Schaefer going from Mississippi State to Texas, Charlie Collier. I'd seen a mock draft talking about Charlie Collier, potential number one pick in the next WNBA draft, but how great of a season she's gotten off to. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a good matchup on got, ESPN later this evening. You've got mentor versus mentee and Gary Blair and Vic Schaefer. Always a really fun, fast-paced, interesting matchup. But, but yeah, Charlie Collier, you see the arms on her, that, that girl? That's why she's in the conversation to be number one player drafted in the WNBA. He's just walking 20 and 10, it looks like. I think well, Texas A&M, Tyler, is a sleeper team. I mean, not really many people are talking about the Aggies. They obviously lost Kennedy Carter, the WNBA. But they're they're loaded. That's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, Aggies number 12, Texas 25th, and on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. You see the top 10, South Carolina number one, Stanford. Saw Stanford back underway playing in Las Vegas, I believe, UNLV. UConn, Baylor, Louisville, Mississippi State. So we talked for Oklahoma, but all these teams as well talked about this season and how it'll look. There's a game threshold, having to make sure that they get in the amount of games that they want. Obviously, we've seen games fall off the schedule. Teams working to try to play as many as they can. Got to get to 13 games. I mean, UConn is, is a really interesting story. They haven't even started season. They haven't played a game, and this is a top five team. I think they'll get one game here in the next week, and then they'll start Big East. It's Taylor Robertson hits that three. Yeah, you don't want to see number 30 if you are the opponent with that much space. Is Oklahoma into the lead? Their last lead was at five to four. After that made three. One of the best, if not the best shooters in the country. You give her that much space, you book it. And you, the pretty thing about her shot is it very rarely hits rim. And this is a player who has put in so much time to develop and become one of the best shooters. And her dad taught her these three steps. One, you can't skip steps. Two, whatever you do, do it for the right reasons and be grateful. And, and, and reading about her story, she wears 30 in honor of Steph Curry, her favorite player, but her dad wouldn't let her shoot threes until she was in eighth grade. Now, nowadays, you gotta be a three-point specialist before you even get to high school. And so he didn't skip that step. He let her get strong before she could shoot the three-pointer. And my favorite part of that story with, with Taylor Robertson and her dad, who she now plays in honor of, was being grateful. And so coming in to practice after every game, she thanks her head coach. She thanks everybody. And I think that's really special and speaks volumes to Taylor Robertson. Your dad passed away when she was in high school and you saw those things she does to honor and her play. Definitely reflective of the work that they put in. You'd mentioned the progression. Made her start close to the basket, work all the way back. You see it with young players sometimes. They just want to get out there and gun, shoot it from deep. But a great story and a great player to watch. One of the best, if not the best, three-point shooter yeah. we have in our game. Energy-wise, Steffi, just the feel for this one, it feels like Oklahoma is dictating the pace of the game, the terms for which they want to play it, a little more so than Georgia. You have to remember, too, that 
We talked about this at the start of the game, that it's been 11 days since Oklahoma has gotten to play a game. They missed out on three really big opportunities, and they had a tough loss to start the season against Houston. And so I think that they were just ready to go. I mean, it's a little bit of a slow start, obviously, for them, just getting the kinks out, but kind of settling into their offense, not giving up as many half-court paint points to Georgia. And one more point on, on Taylor Robertson, I thought, which was funny, was Jackie Styles recruiting Taylor Robertson, who also is from Kansas, when she was at Missouri State, and then coming to Oklahoma and being on the staff. What a cool combo. Jackie Styles, one of the all-time greats. Williams under the defense will earn the foul, so Oklahoma continuing dictating that tempo. Yeah, for Coach Cole had mentioned, no scout, no scrimmage, no exhibition. Going easier in practice given their limited amount of body. So really just trying to get into the flow of the season. One of the most common complaints I've heard from coaches is, is the inability to have practice players. And that's how you simulate opposing teams you know, different styles of defense, their, their length, that athleticism. You'd rather play against someone who's got double than what you're going to see, so you're ready for it. And so Oklahoma not able to have practice players, most teams opting not to have them. So it makes preparing differently. It was pretty crazy what Coach Cole said after that 85 points that they scored, granted allowing 97, but saying we didn't scratch the surface in terms of offensively what she feels that they can do. In fact, they're week of practice leading up to this said that they didn't practice any offense at all. All the focus was on the defensive end for Oklahoma. I said, well, coach, were there were at least balls out on the court because when you show up to practice <laughs> yeah. and there's no balls out there, that's not, it's not going to be a good day. Yeah, you've been a part of practices like that? Yeah. Um, when you don't see any balls, it's usually you're going to be running. Oh. So, or sliding full court for an hour and a half, if you can imagine being... Sounds like a lot of conditioning. <laughs> yeah. 63 apiece as Nicholson misses with the free throw attempt. Foul called on the drive from Williams, so continuing to be aggressive, putting that ball on the deck. Yeah. Maddie Williams. And this is why Maddie Williams is so tough to guard, because you put a post player on her, and Maddie Williams knows to drive off the bounce because she's going to have that first step over a post player. You put a guard on her, and she'll sit down in the post and post you up. Prior to that, Oklahoma was five for five, their last five field goal attempts. Go back to your playing days as well. We are obviously in the Coliseum, but social distancing, you see all the white Bulldog faces marking those spaces. How hard was it to play here during your playing days? How different is it with them not having the full complement of fans? Yeah, I mean, it was always really tough to play, you know, on the road in general, but also here, they would, you know, there would be tons of fans here at Stegman Coliseum, but I think this season is all about leadership and also building your own energy because it's going to be tough to create your own, especially when shots aren't falling and it's just you and your teammates out there. I mean, fans can kind of help you along, but it's all about what you can create for yourself amongst your team. When you talk about creating energy, Oklahoma has done that. All the way in this third quarter, a miss from Ashley Barker. Oklahoma just red hot from the three-point line, eight for 11. And they're the attackers right now. And they're outscoring Georgia 25 to 15 in this third. That a much needed conversion for Coons in transition. Williams working off the screen, the hesitation, but turns it over as Morrison will bring the ball back the other way. 
Great collection by Barker. That pass was high, but gets it one dribble and finishes. Wasn't sure who that pass was going to, whether it was a post player. Obviously, Barker came down with it and a really tough athletic finish for the freshman. 67 apiece. Shot clock still on. Look at that, the hustle. Sarah Ashley Barker. And this is Georgia's bread and butter here. Getting out off the tip, loose ball. Q Morrison with the speed, but eyes up, most importantly, when she's in transition, finds the open layup. So Georgia chance to inbound. Pull up jumper, that's off. No second chance look. Two story programs in both the Big 12 and the SEC. And fitting that we would have a 67-67 ball game heading into the fourth quarter. Going to be a competitive fourth quarter to close this thing out. Getting all tied up. Georgia in transition. That's their bread and butter. More to come here in the fourth. Oklahoma wins that quarter 25-19 to make it 67 apiece. Coming up after us, Stetson against Florida. Keate Johnson, the preseason SEC player of the year. You might be checking that one out, right? Of course. Good one here at Stegman Coliseum. Tyler Denning, Steffi Sorensen. Oklahoma just their second contest of the season. 11 days since they opened up against Houston. Had three games canceled due to player availability. Gonzaga, South Carolina, and South Dakota. They were going to play in the crossover classic. As for Georgia, off of their best start since the 2017-2018 season. A win at Mercer, win at Georgia Tech, a game that went to overtime. Really a quality matchup between these two in-state rivals. And then at East Carolina, 66-45. Their last matchup, two fiery coaches, two competitors that want this important bragging right, Big 12 SEC Challenge game, but an important non-conference win as well for either of these teams to try to put on the resume. Well, especially because you don't know how they're going to judge who gets into the tournament this year. Both teams, this would be a quality win for. Saw number two in white handling the ball. Connolly coming off that 15 points in the first half was held scoreless in the third quarter. I think I helped her out. This is the announcer when we talk about it and it happens. <laughs> we'll credit you with the assist. More so Gabby Connolly too is dribble penetrating against Oklahoma, catching them off, off the bounce. Yeah, I think that's all her. And how about Sarah Ashley Barker, what we've seen her doing defensively, working through those screens and impacting the ball, a couple turnovers over this last handful of minutes. We've seen that turnover, Tyler, so many times for Georgia, and I think Barker just needs to swing the ball to Connolly on the wing and then let the post reposition and have a better opportunity. That call going the way of Georgia. So taking the charge, bang, bang, play. Been a pretty competitive, pretty tough physical matchup between both of these teams and the freshman at six foot. She, I like her game and she's Once again, strong, number three. Big. He's just going to keep getting more minutes for Joni Taylor. Not only trying to get back into that offensive flow of the game was off from three, but another second chance opportunity. It's where Georgia has struggled trying, as you said earlier, to make that entry pass. There were three defenders converging, so the ball once again turned over by Georgia. Yeah, Oklahoma has, has defensively been in, in help side 
And Maddie Williams comes over. They know this play is taking place. We talked to Sherry Cole. They want to defend by committee, and that means being in help side. And so Georgia has to be much more smarter with her passing, make the extra pass, get a better angle, and catch Oklahoma off guard. Speedy Tot probing, hesitates. That will be on the floor. Staying on this side. Fourth against Q Morrison, so keep an eye. I'm Tyler, with you there. Tyler Brad. and I are shaking our heads. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the swarming defense there, but what about the pass? Wow. Two defenders come over, but the ability to find Davenport from Williams ties it up at 69 apiece. Ashley Barker looking like she was going up to shoot, but still Georgia trying to work the ball into their post. It's a bounce pass, and this is fundamentals, and I understand Barker wants to, to get the three as we take a look at the defense, but also Maddie Williams, the heads up play to find 15 there for the easy two as Gabby Connelly knocks down the two, but Georgia's got to clean up some of these turnovers. If, they're just going to give away buckets to Oklahoma. And they come off that inbound quick, and Conley working off the screen. Knocks down the jumper. Quickly backing down the defender does Gabby Gregory. Connelly with the penetration found Nicholson, but Nicholson, another missed opportunity close for Georgia. Going the other way. Williams called for the offensive foul. <laughs> Sherry Cole pleading her case. We got to take another look at that. I'm not really sure. Maddie Williams led with the dipped her shoulder down. I guess Gabby Con or Gabby Connolly has has earned that charge. Kind of a tough call against Maddie Williams. Four players for Oklahoma with four fouls: Williams, Scott, Simpson, and Greer. That's where the shortage of the bench takes place for Sherry Cole in Oklahoma because Maddie Williams can't pick up a fifth and go out. And she's been their, obviously, their, their biggest scoring option. And we talked about them not necessarily having a lot of players, three opt outs on the season. Yeah, just 10 on the roster coming down here to Athens. So keep an eye 25 for Oklahoma. Tied with the game high 19, Connolly, who's controlling here. Good find, good finish. Williams contested on the other end. Georgia haven't seen too many opportunities like this to get out and run. Connolly thought about the three, goes to the dribble and the floater good. Certainly a game of runs. Georgia on one right now. I think the key has been transition and dribble penetration really hurt Oklahoma. Sure, Cole may be feeling that a little herself. Oklahoma calling a timeout. Georgia, a couple good possessions. They lead 5-4. Good finish coming your way here from Athens. Back and forth game here in Athens, Georgia up by four, led in large part by Gabby Connolly. Here with some dribble penetration that's really worked for the Lady Bulldogs because you're going to set up your offensive player, Maya Caldwell, with the easy two. And then also, get down transition, but with the, with the pull up. 
and that starts with dribble penetration. I think that's really been the difference where Georgia's been able to set out four points here in the fourth quarter. Gabby's done such a great job just all game long. I mean, she's fought, she's scrapped, she's jumped over a bench. She's hit, been hit by screens, but those two plays and impor very important as this is definitely going to be a game of runs as we close out its fourth quarter. Yeah, it's 4-0 the last two for Georgia, but the 726 mark, the last field goal for Oklahoma. So the Sooners calling the timeout. Oklahoma now up to 19 turnovers. So now I know my goal for Georgia coming into this game was to force 20, so they they should break that. This is what Gabby Connolly's been up to on her Sunday afternoon. Don't see that very often. No, I don't. I didn't know they did wrestling here in <laughs> Stedman, but trying to break the table there and. Four personnel working down on the front row. We're actually on the slash. We're not down that close. Could have been us. Got a good one going here. What does Oklahoma come out of the timeout with? A turnover. Forced by the Georgia defense. Pull up on the break. Good hustle. Ashley Barker will go to the line after Georgia earns a second chance. Kayla Coons really set Barker up for that second chance. And to start this fourth quarter was really Oklahoma. Every 50-50 ball they were getting. And now in the last four and a half minutes here, it seems like it's trending more towards Georgia getting those 50-50 balls. You mentioned it for this true freshman, Sarah Ashley Barker, at six feet tall from Birmingham, Alabama. I think for coach Joni Taylor, you had said, defense is always going to get you on the floor. And we have seen number three defensively pestering yeah. throughout this second half. She's gonna have a role. Well, both of her brothers are, are collegiate quarterbacks. So you know, that's a competitive household and she's a high IQ player. She just finds ways to contribute if she's not scoring. And, and that's always gonna get you on the floor, especially when you're defending and rebounding for Joni Taylor. Ruffs over at the table taking a look. That could be big. You see, there's number 25, Williams. I believe the foul will be on 34. Correct? Foul was called against Williams, and that would be her fifth. So that. Would have a big impact on the remaining five minutes and 35 seconds. I mean, that changes the game. I mean, if they're going to call it on this little swipe that Maddie Williams does right there, or the body contact that Liz Scott. One thing I saw, maybe you caught it as well, it's just back a little bit there. If the player was out of bounds on that initial miss yeah. off the rebound, could be something that they're looking at. And that is Great what. point. These referees tasked with evaluating that whole situation, but also looking at the foul. So look here. See if. So they look past that. Nobody out of bounds touching the ball when Coombs was in there. But the foul has been reversed, not on Williams, which would have been her fifth. But for Lewis Scott, it is number five. She has been terrific for Sherry Cole today. And the six foot two sophomore has to sit down. So Simpson and Williams on the floor for Oklahoma, both with four fouls each. It's Oklahoma 14 fouls with 535 left. There's no coincidence, Jenna Stady back in the game with both post players for Sherry Cole's Oklahoma team. Having four, you go right to her, try to get one of them out of the game. Oklahoma goes right into the post themselves. Off from Gregory, rebound from Stady. Bulldogs will pull it out.
Conley trying to work that screen from Stadia. Whistle on the floor. That will go against Robertson. Georgia, six point advantage, 459. Finals. New Year's Day. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Hard to think New Year's Day just right around the corner. Thursday, latest episode of True South. John T. Edge is in Brownsville, Tennessee. A couple visionary restaurants, a couple interesting art projects. True South presented by Yellowwood. Thursday, 10 Eastern, 9 Central here on SEC Network, the ESPN app as well. Tyler Denning, Steffi Sorensen here, Big 12 SEC Challenge. We saw a very tight ball game, but a 6-0 run over the last minute 26, two minute and 27 second scoring drought for Oklahoma. Foul trouble for Oklahoma as well. As you look at this, 459, break down what you need to see from both teams if they want to get a win. Oklahoma certainly has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. It's all about possessions now. Five minutes to go. When they went on that run, they were taking care of the ball. They were scoring in the paint. They were finding open open players. They're 8 from 11 from the three-point line. So I think that's always an option for Oklahoma, but certainly trying to beat Georgia off the bounce. And, and for the Lady Bulldogs, Triple penetration works against Oklahoma. You put them in a bind, you try to the high-low. That's not necessarily working. So I, I say stay with Gabby Connolly, Jenna Stady in the pick and roll. But more importantly, you know, you want to stay out of foul trouble. But also, buckling down in the half court. No easy shots for Oklahoma. Gabby Connolly, 21 points. That's a game high. Across the first three games of the season, she had a combined 22 points. So in this, the home opener for the senior Connolly. Equates her season output with that her 22nd point. Puts her team up seven and now eight. I think the biggest difference in Georgia from last year to this year is if Gabby Connolly struggled, Georgia didn't win games. And now they have the depth to survive. If she's not playing well, obviously she's playing well in this game. It makes a difference. Gotten 14 from Caldwell, 13 from Stady. As Williams, we saw the big sequence that went to review that could have put her on the bench with that fifth foul, but keeping her team within two possessions. Plenty of time. Pull up off. Good find by Robertson to Simpson, but she travels. Turnovers. 21 so far for the Sooners in this game. Yeah, so that good in terms of your keys you talked about for Georgia wanting to force 20 plus, but bad for Oklahoma. And you had mentioned it, Robertson just had that great hesitation in taking that space to open that up, but a turnover, Oklahoma not even getting an opportunity. So what does Georgia have in this half court set? Conley and Stady working that screen and Connolly getting the home court, home rim roll. And then some. Look at Connolly. Defense there. It turns it over. Robertson with the steal. They've got to find Robertson a look here. Yeah, with an eight point deficit, possession so valuable right now. And that converted, Oklahoma needing that. Gregory took it herself, had a shooter. I saw you pointing it out, screaming for the shooter in the corner. That a needed basket can they get a stop here well certainly if you've got a couple of georgia players down if you're taylor robertson you're you're spotting up go, 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 
It's the cleanest look as you'll get, but Gregory, tough as nails, gets the two. Seven on the shot clock as Conley pulls up. Ball will stay going the way of Georgia. Barker just creates such a fit rebounding wise, trying to block her out because she comes in there flying. She's trying to get that offensive rebound and neither players want a foul. That's once again, number two in white on the deck. It's taking so much contact today. If Georgia walks away with the win. She's going to be a nice bath right after this. It will be much earned by Connolly and her effort. Oh. And that's a tough play too, especially on an out of bounds play. You know the play is coming, you step in front. Sitting down, that fifth foul called against her. So if Oklahoma is to pull it off, it will be without their leading scorer in this game. The second 20-point outing for Maddie Williams, the junior, and kind of why I alluded to Robertson getting involved, because if the if Maddie Williams got into foul trouble, had to be out, you want somebody like Robertson who's hit a few three-pointers who's gotten to the free throw line, something to get her involved offensively so she can score when they need it. Obviously, that's now. And thrown out on the entry pass. Williams sitting down after eight of 16. Two of three from behind the arc. Team high, 21.6 rebounds, three assists. be the icing on the cake. A big three-pointer for Georgia. Push their lead up to double digits and a block for Stady on the other end. Six foot seven wingspan, Jenna Stady. She was a swimmer in high school. Look at the height, the length. Full stare down after and her teammates love when Stady gets blocks. So it was the Morrison three to the Stady block and stare down. As the clock approaches two minutes left. 11 point lead for the home. Georgia Lady Bulldogs looking to move to 4-0 on the season. Barker from three. Georgia feeling it from the three point line. Well, now that lead pushing up, but I think if you, you look back on this game, so much credit to Oklahoma and how gritty they were. This was a very tight ball game. It's been an 8-0 run over the last minute for Georgia, really putting it at a distance. But Oklahoma coming in, just 10 players on the roster, foul trouble throughout this one. And Barker and Michaela Coons, two players that don't start the game, are finishing the game. And you know, that's kind of been the difference to close this quarter out, is to being able to make substitutions and have fresh bodies, fresh legs to hit three-pointers, to start your offense where most of these players, Gregory, Robertson, I mean, they're, they're logging 30 plus minutes. Yeah, it'll be great to watch Oklahoma over the course of the year and as they evolve. So then they jump right into conference play, which is so interesting. Another wrinkle of this year on the 10th, they go at Kansas. So just their third game of the season for Coach Cole and Oklahoma. They jump into a conference foe. Then four dates at home, Texas State, Oklahoma State, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Kansas State before the calendar turns to the new year. For Georgia, they're gonna be home for all of 
December after starting their season off on the road for three games at Stady at the line. They will play Jacksonville State, then Radford, Georgia State, Furman, App State before kicking off SEC play on New Year's Eve, December 31st against Mississippi State. Tell me about this Georgia team here. Where do you think they fall amongst the SEC squads? Well, I think this is definitely an NCAA tournament team. They have the depth and, and more importantly, the leadership and seniors to get them there. What I find interesting about this season, Tyler, is the juxtaposition of teams that get maybe five or six games in their non-conference, six or seven, or some like Oklahoma that gets one or two, and then they have to play, go straight into Big 12. The preseason poll, Georgia predicted to be finished ninth, which I think is fitting, um, but I think the new pieces with this team and, and the way that they've started non-conference, Georgia's looked really good. Some things that they need to fine tune, obviously, Joni Taylor and the turnovers is, is something that they've got to get better at. Oklahoma today, 19 points off of Georgia's 14 turnovers. Yeah, so interesting, the scheduling wrinkles and Talk for Oklahoma, well now you kind of set your sights to conference play, but then jump back into a handful of non-conference games. Georgia obviously trying to make the most out of this long homestand. And, and it's already been proven to be an up and down start for the SEC. South Carolina going down to NC State. Mississippi State losing to USF. LSU has had a tough start at 0-3. So the home opener for Georgia just notched their thousandth win in program history. Gabby Connolly getting to open their home slate of games and she does so emphatically 27 points, nine of 17 from the floor. A chance to add to that a perfect six of six from the line, three of eight from behind the arc. And you'd mentioned it for Georgia last year, the difference with Connolly, so much on her shoulders. Obviously a bellwether for this team, but a little more to help support her this year. Well, they have balance, and it's not just guards, it's guards and posts, and there's depth on the bench. So it doesn't all just fall on Gabby Connolly, and other players had injuries last year, but it's more complete Georgia team this season. Those of y'all waiting for Stetson and Florida, we'll get you out to Gainesville here in just 27.7 seconds. Couple free throws to put this one in the books. Make it 4-0 on the year for Georgia. Best start mentioned since 2017-2018. Coach Joni Taylor in her sixth season. See what Mike White and the Gators can do this season. If it's anything like college football, I'm all in. You'll be checking your phone at <laughs> stoplights on the drive back home. Final thoughts on this one? I thought it was a tremendous output uh, for both teams. Really competitive and really fun to watch. And stars shining, Gabby Connolly, Maddie Williams. But Georgia just too much for the Sooners. We'll have one more whistle as that ball. That court violation. So 1.8 left to go, but in terms of the Big 12 SEC challenge, they do keep a score. This one will go in favor of the SEC. A couple really good games later across the SEC Big 12 challenge, ESPN family of networks. Georgia victorious in this one by 13 for Steffi Sorensen, rest of our crew, Tyler Denning saying so long from Athens, Georgia. Send you over to Gainesville.